In this video, we will discuss process chain of additive manufacturing. All additive manufacturing techniques adopt same basic approach. Additive manufacturing systems generally have a similar sort of process chain. Such a generalized process chain is shown here. Basically, we can divide the process chain into five basic steps. First is 3D modeling. Then the second step is 3D digital model is converted into STL file format and then transferred into the additive manufacturing system. Third step is checking and preparing. The 3D CAD model is checked for any errors and prepared by slicing the CAD model into required number of cross sections so that the 3D printer can print these cross sections in a layer by layer format. Fourth step is building of model. In this step, the printer prints the part in a layer by layer format. The last step is post processing. In this step, operations such as cleaning, post curing, and finishing are done. Let's discuss each step more briefly. First step is 3D modeling. 3D CAD modeling is a general prerequisite and usually is the most time consuming part of the entire process chain. 3D modeling should be error free and needs to be closed surface. It is most important that such 3D geometrical models can be shared by the entire design team for many different purposes such as interference studies, first stress analysis can be used for designing and drafting of model. If we need to produce some n number of products, we can use this 3D model to plan for manufacturing. And if we want to produce parts in the industry, we can use this for NC programming. Things we might need to consider are what will be the orientation of part? Because support structures, support structure material consumption is different for different orientations. Do we need any support structures for our model? Is it difficult to build certain part structure such as thin walls, small slots or holes and overhanging elements? The problem is usually more complex than one can imagine because there are many different 3D printing machines with different printing techniques. They have their own requirements and capabilities. After acquiring the 3D CAD model, the next step is data conversion and transmission. The CAD model to be built is next converted into a format known as STL file format. STL is the abbreviation for standard tessellation language or we can also call it as stereolithography. The STL file format approximates the surfaces of the model using tiny triangles. If the 3D model is complex, or let's simply say it has highly curved surfaces, in this case, we must employ many more triangles, which means that STL files for curved parts can be very large. This conversion step is probably the, slim, probably the uh, simplest and shortest of entire process chain. However, for a highly complex model coupled with an extremely low performance workstation or personal computer, Conversion can take several hours, otherwise the conversion of STL file should take only several minutes. Necessary supports are also converted to a separate STL file. Supports can alternatively be created or modified in the next step by third party software, which allows verification and modifications of models and supports. The transmission step is also fairly straightforward. The purpose of this step is to transfer the STL files to 3D printing system. Data conversion may be carried out through a disk, email or LAN connection or simply a pen drive. The third step is checking and preparing. The computer term garbage in garbage out is also applicable to 3D printing systems. Many first time users are frustrated at this step to discover that their STL files are faulty. However, more often, this is due to both the errors of CAD models 
and non-robustness of the CAD STL interface. The errors in CAD models should be avoid, avoided in the 3D modeling stage itself. These errors could be 1. Gaps or holes or missing facets we can say. 2. Degenerate facets. 3. Overlapping facets and finally the fourth one is non-manifold topology conditions. There are also some special errors, special case errors we can say. We will discuss about the STL file problems or types of errors in CAD models in a separate video. At present the CAD model, errors are corrected by human operators assisted by specialized software. This process of manual repair is very tedious and time consuming, especially if one considers the great number of geometric entities that are encountered in a CAD model. Once the STL files are verified to be error free, the computer analyzes the STL files that define the model to be fabricated and slices the model into cross sections. The cross sections are systematically recreated in the printer in the 3D printer to form a 3D model. The fourth step is building of model. For most additive manufacturing systems, this step is fully automated. Thus, it is usual for operators to leave the machine on to build a part overnight. We can simply say that this step is the easiest step of the entire process chain. We just need to make sure that the input raw material is enough to build the entire model. Building process may take up to several hours, usually depends on the size and number of parts required. The number of identical parts that can be built is subject to the overall build size constrained by the build volume of the additive manufacturing system. The final task in the process chain is the post-processing task. At this stage, generally some manual operations are necessary. As a result, the danger of damaging a part is high. Therefore, the operator for this last process step has a high responsibility for the successful process realization. The cleaning task refers to the removal of excess parts which may have remained on the part. Post-processing is different for different additive manufacturing techniques. For example, post-processing of SLA or stereolithography parts. Here this refers to excess resin in entrapped portions such as a blind hole of a part as well as the removal of supports. Similarly for SLS or selective laser sintering parts, the excess powder has to be removed. Likewise, for LOM or laminated object manufacturing parts, pieces of excess wood-like blocks of paper which acted as supports have to be removed. The number of post-processing tasks vary from one additive manufacturing technique to other. Most importantly, for safety reason, specific recommendations for post-processing tasks have to be prepared. Especially for cleaning of SLA parts, it was reported that accuracy is related to the post-processing treatment process. Finishing in post-processing refers to secondary processes such as sanding and painting used primarily to improve the surface finish or aesthetical appearance of the part. It also includes additional machining processes such as drilling, tapping and milling to add necessary features to the part thanks for watching subscribe for more engineering concepts and happy learning